Hello, everybody. I'm Zeenat Islam, and welcome to the 28th session of our YSBC Web Lecture Series. The topic of today's conversation is creating a 3-0 world, the role of universities. Today we have with us our speaker, Ms. Sharifa Sophia, trustee of the Al-Bukhari Foundation. We have another speaker, Dr. Suraya Hanim Mukhtar, associate professor, dean, School of Business and Social Sciences, Al-Bukhari International University, Malaysia. Our wonderful moderator today is Dr. Ana Fernandez Laviada, Director, UNO Social Business Center, University of Cantabria, Spain. Some background information on our speaker and moderator. Uh, Sharifa Sofia serves as a trustee of the Al Bukhari Foundation and currently works in the private sector with a focus on corporate finance and strategy. She currently chairs the scholarship committee at the Al Bukhari International University, Malaysia, where she serves as a member of the university's board of governors. She has a keen interest in international development, social business and entrepreneurship, and more specifically, exploring the role of education in promoting progressive change. Uh, Dr. Suraya Hanim, Dean uh, School of Business and Social Sciences at Al Bukhari University, has been actively involved in conducting workshops and community engagement programs relating to empowering micro entrepreneurs in financial literacy. Finally, our moderator, Dr. Ana Fernandez, has been the director of our YSBC in Cantabria since 2019. She's also been the president of the Observatory of Entrepreneurship in Spain since 2013. She has more than 50 papers published in index journals, and um, her, the list goes on and on of the places where she's published. Her research interests include social and educational entrepreneurship, teaching innovation in accounting and auditing, and internal and financial auditing. So with this great introduction, let us start today's session with three incredible ladies. And I now call upon Professor Mohamed Yunus for his opening remarks. Professor Yunus. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted uh, to welcome you, both of you, uh, all of you, three of you. Uh, it's a very special occasion for the lecture series. We have three very young uh, academicians, accomplished academicians participating uh, in this discussion. And the topic is very important, uh, the role of the universities in creating a 3 0 world. Uh, I always insist that that is where the mindsets are uh, taken shape uh, in the academic institutions, particularly at the university level, where they are just ready to go into the world and do things uh, what needed to be done. So this is where uh, your location is, all three of you. And uh, you'll be looking at the university, what they are looking for, and what the university can play, uh, what kind of role the university can play to the things to create the world of the three zeros. And I'm very happy today is a heavily Al Bukhari University uh, with uh, uh, Sophia is already uh, Sharifa is here. Sharifa uh, uh, is very actively engaged uh, in the university, in all the activities and the planning and so on. And uh, then we have the Surya, Dr. Surya Hanim. Uh, she is a uh, dean of the School of Business. Uh, and both of them are engaged uh, in the university and me as the Chancellor of the University. So we have three of us uh, heavily biased to the uh, Al Bukhari University. So I'm very happy to get all of us together in, in favor of uh, Al Bukhari University. And Al Bukhari University has a vision. That's the most important thing. It's not just another university. It is started with a vision and, and uh, trying to translate that vision in reality. And that's how I got involved in that. Uh, and a very interesting thing we're just discussing, uh, the bulk of the undergraduate students, 80% of the undergraduate students are foreign students and all the foreign students are given scholarships. So it's a very fascinating way you bring the whole world together by your scholarship program and, and the kind of an unusual uh, student group that you have. And this is a fantastic thing that's happening in this campus. And I see this result uh, when I talk about the three zero clubs, an unusually larger number of three zero clubs are formed in Al Bukhari campus. And with many diversity of the in, uh, countries involved in each of the uh, club. So I'm very happy and want to thank both of you uh, for encouraging the students to create the three zero club. 
and in general to all all the students or all people who are in this audience today i appeal to all of you to encourage young people to form the three zero clubs uh, wherever they are the university campuses outside campuses businesses careers wherever they are uh, this is one way to get them to understand what three zero is all about and preparing them for creating a three zero world that's the whole topic that we'll be discussing discussing and I had the uh, very uh, good luck to visit the uh, Canterbury University campus uh, 2019. And that was an exciting visit, uh, meeting everybody uh, in the campus and talking to them. I enjoyed it very much. Today, I'm very happy that you got, uh, got Anna Fernandez, uh, another accomplished uh, academician. And she's also the head of the UNIS uh, Social Business Center at the Canterbury University. So today we had a very special group of people uh, that will be listening to, and we are eagerly waiting to see uh, how the discussion goes. And I uh, give the floor to Anna, Dr. Anna Fernandez. Hello, um, I'm so happy to be here today and so excited uh, to share with uh, all, all, all our audience uh, the um, the big things that uh, this university is doing. I'm, I'm really envied. So I also started in uh, 2019, but um, when I was looking how your university is working and what they are doing, I was so impressed that uh, I was willing to share this with all my, well, especially with all my colleagues and uh, many people who is in Spain interested in social businesses, but also with the rest of the audience. So, hello, Sarifa Sofia. Hello, Dr. Suraya. I'm very happy, as I said, to be here um, and to learn a lot about you. So, um, one thing that I would like to start is uh, because really I've been so impressed uh, about what you have been doing, but uh, I think we should start first uh, speaking a little bit more about uh, uh, how is your university. Why is different? Why I think that there is going to be a, a big reference for all of us? Uh, because I know you are new, but uh, you are new, but very different. So maybe you can start, uh, Sarifa Sofia, telling us uh, why I say that uh, your university, your young university is so special. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Anna. Before I begin, firstly, thank you, Professor Mohamed Yunus. Lamia, Zinat, Rakipo, for the opportunity to speak here tonight. I'm humbled by the recognition and honored to be here. Before I begin, in the spirit of a family gathering, I would like to acknowledge and thank, firstly, my father, Said Mukhtar, for being a visionary. Thank you for recognizing the power of education and providing opportunity to those who need it most. My mother, Sharifa Zara, for raising me with love and patience. Thank you for giving me a life of meaning. My dearest uncle, Said Muhammad, for empowering youth and treating men and women as equals. Thank you for being my voice of reason. My grandmother, Sharifa Rokia, for being my loudest cheerleader despite being illiterate. Thank you for constantly calibrating my moral compass. My mentor, Datuk Sri Idris Jusso, for all the support, guidance, and advice. Thank you for challenging me to redesign higher education. Last but not least, allow me to single out our source of inspiration, the reason we're all here today. Thank you, Professor Muhammad Yunus, for all that you've done and continue to do for humanity. Thank you for your trust in the Al Bukhari International University. We are honored and proud to have you as our inaugural chancellor. There is a whole host of names I would like to call out, but in the interest of time, I would save that for a graduation ceremony next year. Now I'll proceed to answer your question, Dr. Anna. The Al Bukhari International University is a private, not for profit university located in the hometown of my father in Al Sarkada. It was built with the sole purpose of increasing access to higher education to the world's brightest minds, academically talented but financially constrained students. Most of our students are on scholarships sponsored by the Al Bukhari Foundation. When I was tasked to rebuild the university in 2018, the need to define our niche was apparent and the prospect of redesigning higher education was exciting. With all odds stacked up the 24 year old self that I was, the journey to where we are today was rife with challenges. I sought guidance from academics and industry experts who were kind enough to give me their time. 
and amidst my learning curve at home, received an invitation to attend the GWEL week at MIT. Thank you, Julie. I believe she's in the audience today. Every day I would ask myself, what makes me think I can do this? I did not have the answer, but I knew what our purpose was. I knew we had, we had to challenge status quo and I knew we had to stand out. We had to do things differently. And in doing so, identified social business as the niche of Al Bukhari International University. Once I had buy-in from various stakeholders, I built a team and aligned our resources to reinforce our commitment to the social business agenda. Just like Professor Yunus and his lack of exposure to the banking sector, which led to his huge success with the Grameen Bank, the benefit that I had in leading the university was not knowing anything about higher education. Having said that, I read, I read the Act 555, I read the university constitution, I read the strategic plans of other universities, I did my homework, and above all, I realized along the way that I had the opportunity to shape the next generation of leaders. How exciting is that? Going back to what makes us special is inextricably linked to our purpose. I will start with our purpose. The founder and chairman of the Al-Bukhari Foundation, Said Mokhtar, was deprived of the opportunity to pursue higher education because of poverty. As a result, when he had the opportunity to give back to society, he upheld the belief that no one should be deprived of an education. The opportunity to pursue higher education creates a lifeline and allows one to redefine their future. Next, the product of any university or its graduates. At AIU, we have five core values that every member of the university must subscribe to. They are adab, akhla, akida, amana, and amalan. While these values may sound Islamic in nature, they are universal values of humanity that seek to create modest individuals with dignity driven by a strong sense of purpose. In addition to the above, the founder coined the three eight hour rule to create balanced individuals. The day has 24 hours, eight hours for the day's education, eight hours for the night's sleep and eight hours for helping others in need. Our goal at AIU is to formulate what I call the AIU DNA, where our graduates carry the five A's, they practice the eight hour rule and the idea of social business is always in their minds. If you met a graduate from an Ivy League university, you would see how outstanding they are. Similarly, we hope to instill the AIU DNA in each and every one of our scholars that graduate from AIU, such that they stand out in society and become leaders of our community, equipped with empathy, compassion, and above all, courage. The other thing that makes us unique is the way that the university is set up. So we have a schools instead of faculties. At present, we have three schools. The first one is the School of Business and Social Sciences. The second is the School of Education and Human Sciences. And the third is the School of Computing and Informatics. We are intending to encourage our scholars to do a major minor, where they do a major in business and a minor in computing, for example. So the idea here is not just to um, promote interdisciplinary uh, degree programs, but also to encourage industries, which we have access to, to come in and give exposure to our students. So they could spend one year in industry so that when they enter the workforce, they are more well-equipped. Last but not least, the reason why we're all here tonight is social business. Social business is the niche, as I mentioned just now, of our university. For those who are not familiar with the concept of social business, it is a non-loss, non-dividend company designed to solve a specific social issue. As Professor Yuna said, the philanthropic dollar has one life, but if we use the same dollar in a social business, it has multiple lives. At the Al Bukhari International University, we have three very clear verticals which reinforce our commitment to social business. First is the UNO Social Business Center, which we established in 2019, and there are a whole host of activities which Dr. Soraya will talk about later. We have our research center, which we call the AIU Center of Excellence in Social Economic Development and Innovation. The university board has set aside a grant of 3 million ringgit out of which one third has been dispersed. And in addition to that, we have the social business lab and that's really where all the student activities take place. One thing unique about the university is the location of the university. We're located in Kedah. And for those who don't know, Kedah is the second poorest state in Peninsula Malaysia, according to GDP in terms of GDP per capita. And it is also the border state between Malaysia and Thailand. 
within Kedah, rural parts of Kedah, such as Baling and Sik, poverty is imminent. We hope that through the social business school, um, the social business center at AIU, we're able to scale impact. At present, we have sharing sessions amongst our students every month. We have one social business that's being featured. We also started a social business podcast on Spotify, and that's open to everyone from any part of the world to tune into. Our intention is that every student at AIU belongs to one of the three tracks in the social business lab. So we have zero poverty, zero unemployment, and zero net carbon emissions. Thank you, Dr. Anna. Wow. I think you have said uh, so many things that uh, it's difficult to, uh, maybe for the audience to remember all of them. So then let me go little by little. So you have said so many things. Uh, the first thing, um, through your vision and mission you and your core values that you said, um, I think you are committed to ensure uh, human dignity. And, and you have a lemma or you have the concept of inspiring minds. So how do you, how are you inspiring people uh, for this big change? Thank you for the question. So the challenges that we face today, look at poverty, for example. Poverty is a multidimensional issue. We do not want to tell our students how to resolve poverty. All our students come from different parts of the world. They understand the local context. What we want is to equip them with the tools to show them that in Kedah, which is also a poor state, you can go out to the villages there, look at the social issues and try to design a solution to that problem. Take that back to your own country where you understand local context and tweak that accordingly. When we talk about poverty and inequality, there's no silver bullet. If there was, we wouldn't be sitting here today. So we want to inspire minds. We want to give our students the tools necessary the way that they think, to, to shape their thinking. For me personally, a lot of the, the formative years I spent was at university. And I want to be able to extend that to the students at Al Bahar International University. Great. Um, you have talked about the uh, five core values. Could you tell us a little bit more about that, that, that core values? You uh, said them in Arabic or so, but maybe you can Give us a, a bit more of these values. Sure, sure. Um, each one, so each one is values, as you are aware, they're not tangible. All values are intangible. And this is something that my team and I, up until now, we are still cracking the code how we can measure these values because we definitely want to measure them for each of our students at the university. But values are intangible. But we believe that human beings that carry a certain set of values, when they enter the real world, nothing can come in their way. You are not swayed by money, you're not swayed by fame. You have a certain principle, you have a certain standing. And, and if you can stay true to that, you, you will go very far in life. And, and that's really how the, through the programs that we have at the university, through our lecturers, understanding what these values are and subsequently cascading that down to our students, that's how we ensure that when students leave Al Bukhari International University, they leave with a certain DNA that I mentioned just now. Great. And another thing that uh, I was uh, uh, impressed is about your eight hour rules. Uh, eight hours for study, eight hours for uh, sleep, it's very important also to sleep, and eight hours for. Um, for the rest, no? for the rest of the community, of, for the rest. Uh, how are you? Uh, helping them to do that. So, because I guess it's quite easy. The first uh, eight hours for sleep is quite easy to understand. The first, uh, the other eight hours for studying is also uh, easy to understand. But how can they um, use the other eight hours? Are you also inspiring them in different programs, or are you uh, organizing uh, uh, activities to do that, or how are you? Uh, helping them to use that hours. So the university, as you are aware, we are we're relatively new, but we community engagement is something very close to our heart. So we have programs within the university, of course, the different clubs within the university, but there's also extensive community engagement programs in the rural parts of Kedah. Unfortunately, because of COVID, we are somewhat restricted. Uh, but as soon as we're able to mobilize ourselves and the students, we'll definitely uh, be ramping up those efforts in the rural parts of the state. I think one of the things that you are doing is organizing serious clubs. 
Uh, maybe, Dr. Suraya, you could uh, tell us a little bit, a bit more about these uh, clubs, uh, how they work. Um, I heard before from Professor Junos that you have many already organized. So, could you tell us a little bit more about these uh, clubs, the CCO clubs? Okay, uh, thank you very much, Anna. Uh, three zero club is a is a school uh, is a students uh, club that comprise of three clusters like Professor Yunus mentions. We have zero poverty, zero employment, and zero net carbon emissions. Uh, actually, we started the uh, philosophy of the club before it been uh, announced by Professor Yunus uh, early twenty twenty uh, or in the middle of twenty twenty. We set up the lab, social business design lab. Uh, which also comprise of three, uh, three clusters, and each of the clusters act like a three zero club. So the philosophy is similar, like three zero club. So uh, we started earlier. Then uh, this is how all the social business activities uh, with the community uh, started. Uh, how are students uh, get this kind of activities? Are they um, motivated? Uh, do they like it? Uh, do they, is it easy to organize these groups? Okay. Uh, uh, for us, uh, actually, we, uh, we have a different uh, style of uh, conducting the program. Uh, I would say maybe this is our formula of uh, engaging students to uh, participate in the club and, also, and all the social business activity. So first thing, uh, in uh, our curriculum structure, we embedded uh, social business courses in the curriculum. So like Sharifa Soka mentioned just now, we have three schools in the, in the university. So uh, each of the students, regardless of uh, what uh, program they are studying, uh, they have to take social business courses. So it's like university compulsory course. So even though you study computer education, you have to take uh, social business. So at early stage, uh, first year of study, they have to take social business one. Okay. So this is the first interventions uh, for us to install social business minded among the students. Then, right. yes, then to all the, uh, in, the, so, in, the, in, the, in the social business one, they have to come up with the, uh, they have to identify the social issues uh, around the community and they, they have to come up with social solutions. And from that, you know, when the course ended, uh, the, the program that they conducted is it, not end like that. So we will carry, we will carry the program in the in lab. So the lab will continue the program. So it's like it continuously, uh, we, we are continuously working on community engagement, even though this, the, the course has ended. So this is how we can see that so many programs running in university and it's continuously. That's great. Because it's not just a, a particular thing. It's just something you, they have since the beginning. So you have to keep going and keep growing. That, that sounds great. Um, Sarifa, you, you told us that uh, you have students from a lot of countries. I don't know if you said 60 countries or because I, I was looking at the web page and I thought I saw uh, 47 countries, but uh, you said already 60 countries. Sure, sure. Do you want me to just pick up on that? So our university is international. 80% of our student population are international and that is as for what is dictated by our university license. And, and the way how we approached it, so currently on campus, we are represented by 45 countries. But as you are aware, some of our students are online because of COVID. We are in the midst of bringing them into the campus. And if we take those registered students into consideration as well, we are represented by 62 countries. Wow. So the, the approach, yeah, so the approach that we took when bringing in international students, we don't go through any uh, recruitment agents. We don't have any formal arrangements. But what we try to do, because we understand the demographics and the student population that we seek to recruit, um, we work closely with different community leaders. So in some countries, we work with NGOs. In some countries, we work with community leaders. In some countries, we work with zakat bodies and other, other members of the, trusted members of the community such that we can penetrate to help those in greatest need. 
so the approach that we took at our university, initially we focus on our neighboring countries. So within ASEAN, we mm -hmm. tried to identify partners within ASEAN that we could work with. And then over time, it grew organically. And now, to be honest with you, my challenge, our challenge at the university is local student recruitment, not international student recruitment. <laughs> um, but, but really, when we bring in students from all parts of the world, what we want to give them is good quality education, good quality education and understanding of social business and to, be, to allow them to become agents of change upon graduation. Because I place my hope in the youth and I place my hope in students that at every university, not just at Al Bukhari International University. So it's incredibly important for them to understand what leadership means. And we can talk about leadership a bit later. Take that back to their respective countries and propagate this idea of social business and you know, have a different way of thinking as to how we address some of the world's most pressing challenges. Mm, that sounds great. I wonder if you have a, a, a gender a, a participation, does you have more women than men or you have almost half and half? Uh, how is the, uh, the, well, the, the people who is following your uh, programs? I'd say it's 50-50 and we hope to maintain that. Mm. Yeah. Because uh, usually when we research about the social businesses, uh, we usually see that uh, there are more women than men following these kind of programs. But um, I guess the, um, well, maybe here you are, because uh, it's so international and you are uh, looking for people all around the world, maybe you can keep the, the proportion no? of uh, both. Yeah, definitely. And I think one thing I would like to add as well is that for our undergraduate programs, most of our students are on scholarship, but for postgraduate program, which is something that Dr. Soraya will share later on in the conversation, we're open to fee paying students. And that's where we would like to invite students from all parts of the world to come to us and to for AIU to be the referral point when we talk about social business in Southeast Asia. That kind of programs are a one year program or do you have shorter programs? Yes, Anna, uh, we're going to offer a uh, UNOS uh, professional master, mm -hmm. uh, which is currently uh, the first university who started uh, why UNOS professional master is AIT, uh, Asian Institute of Technology. So we, are, we, become, we become the second university that will offer a uh, UNOS professional master. It's one year program. Uh, is 42 credit hours. So um, I think the fundamental uh, program has been built by Professor Yunus himself. And uh, each of the university uh, might uh, have some uniqueness about the program. It's like us in AIU. Uh, we put the element, we, we copy all the fundamental concept of uh, what has been built earlier, but we add some value uh, which is uh, we uh, offer a set of uh, social uh, or finance course, uh, for example, social finance and uh, Islamic uh, finance. Uh, we believe that uh, you know uh, this uh, finance uh, course is the innovative uh, method uh, to uh, give the diversity of uh, financial uh, financial uh, instruments. So this is the uniqueness of, uh, of uh, our uh, uh, Unisport Ocean Master Program. And the other thing about the uniqueness is uh, uh, all the projects, all the practicum, uh, all the activities will be conducted in our living lab. Uh, we have our own living lab, which is in the, situated in uh, Bali and Sikh. So we have dedicated, we have designed a living lab. So as for now, all the activities, all the student activities related to community engagement, social business, we are really doing it within the community. So those are two districts that we have chosen. So the students in, for those who are enrolled for Unis Version Master also, we're gonna to bring to our living lab. So we get the experience, uh, some flavor of experience uh, doing research or doing a community engagement. Uh, you know, in you know, one part of the uh, district in the Malaysia. I guess there will be many people in the audience that now is willing to follow your programs. How can they uh, apply or how can they 
eh, manifest their interest in your programs? Do yes. you have any special form or through your web page or media? Yeah. We're going to advertise this very soon. Now we are in the uh, we are finalizing the documentation to be uh, submitted to our Ministry of Higher Education. So soon, uh, we're going to offer this in October 2022. Okay. So, so but I will, uh, you know, toward the end of the program, I will share the, uh, the link to, to all the audience uh, to, for those who has interest to study Unit Social Master with us. So you can uh, put your information. We're going to contact you after this. Right, because I, I know you will have many apply, many applications. <laughs> um, I'm going to come back to you, Sarifa. Um, Professor Junos is your chancellor. So why uh, or what do you think that this could be? Uh, how, how do you think that this could influence in your uh, mission and vision? So you are very lucky that you have the Professor Junos at, um, in your board. So, what's the message that you want to give with that? Why did you choose him? Sure, sure. I I think for me, I would just take a step back and and start with a personal story. During my A levels, I picked up the book Banquet to the Poor, written by Professor Muhammad Yunus from my school library, and it was then that I knew I had to delve deeper into the work of Professor Muhammad Yunus. Fast forward to 2014, I was a student of economics at the University of York. My friend Anna and I, we interned at the Grameen Bank during our spring break. I met Professor Mohamed Yunus for the first time at the interns roundtable discussion. And that night I called my parents up to tell them that I had met a legend. <laughs> I was completely starstruck and I knew that I had to do more than just the internship. At that point, I had no idea I was going to be involved in the university. I had no idea I was going to find myself in higher education. I just knew that I had to learn something and bring back the little knowledge that I had from Bangladesh to my country to make a difference. And fate, fate was written and I had come a full circle with Professor Yunus. So back to the point. Once we resolved our teething issues at the Al-Buhari International University, we, we reached a point where we had to decide on who the chancellor of the university would be. And at that point, we had already um, defined the niche of the university to be social business. So I spoke to the team, we checked the constitution, because typically in Malaysia, the royal family and the royalty would sit as chancellors of the universities, whether it's public or private. But there was nothing in our constitution that said that had to be the case. There were no regulatory requirements for us to comply with that. So I wrote several cold emails to Professor Yunus. I reached out to the Yunus team and I said, look, this is our vision. This is our mission. This is our purpose. You are a chancellor. You are a great person and a chancellor of so many universities in the Western world. Please consider our university, our small university in the East. And after multiple communications, conversations going back and forth, when Professor Yunus really understood who we were and what we were trying to achieve, we were very grateful that he finally said yes. And I think with his appointment, we are serious about social business. It reinforces our commitment, our message, and it gives us a huge responsibility to deliver as well. Uh, we need a new economic structure that goes without saying. We want AIU to be the central reference point when it comes to social business. That is the message that we're sending across. And, and I'll be honest with you, Anna, we're still figuring things out. We may seem like we have it all put together today, but within the university, one of the challenges that we face is that the idea of social business is concentrated within the School of Business. This shouldn't be the case. The School of Education, the School of Computing also needs to carry elements of social business. And that, that's something my team and I are working on. That's great. Uh, well, believe it or not, uh, Sarifa, we have a, 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 a we have something in common. Uh, I met Professor Yunus in uh, 2016 at the um, uh, Social Business uh, Conference, PIDIA. Um, it was the first time I listened to him. I went there with a friend of mine who is also researching about the social entrepreneurship. And after listening to him, um, I can say that my life changed uh, because I was, um, um, it was when I began to think, oh, I had to do something. 
Uh, I used to be part of the Dean team in my faculty. I work at the Faculty of Business and Economics in the University of Cantabria at the north of Spain. Um, when I was like, a, like you, Dr. Asuraya, I was part of, well, you are the dean, I was part of the dean, uh, the dean team, um, and I was uh, in charge of students. So during my period there for four years, I was worried because I, I could see how students are so uh, uh, unmotivated. So they, they just, um, they are, sometimes they are at the faculty studying, but they, they don't know what they want. They don't know, uh, they, they are not thinking in their future. They are just studying, but they, without no, sometimes without no sense. So they have no a, a real vision or they have no illusion for anything. So that's why when I met Professor Yunus and he explained us the things that he were doing all around the world, I was so impressed and I was so, um, uh, I, let's say worried because I thought I, I should do something in my country, I should, should, should do something in my local area. So I'm not pretending to do something huge, no? but uh, that's why two years later, I finally uh, got uh, that my university um, signed the contract with uh, Professor Junus, and that's why now we have Skiara at Junus Social Business Center. But uh, but now I know that uh, there are many many things to do. So I, I would like in the future at least to see my region. Uh, I would like to see more social businesses around me. But what about you? What are you? If you try to think in five years further, uh, what? Uh, what things you would like to see? What uh, would you like to, to get for the future? Sure, I'll take, I'll take that. As, as you are aware, strategic planning is the cornerstone to every university's success. It is also important to appreciate that a university's strategic plan is a living document and it needs to be understood by everybody. So the way that I would approach uh, this question or really this, this issue is, I would break it down into the three pillars of any university, which is number one, research, number two, education, number three, innovation. And against that, I would map out the School of Business, the School of Education, and the School of Computing. And in the innovation vertical of my matrix here, I would overlay social business on that. So from an educational perspective, we want to make sure that our courses are relevant, that our courses are, um, that our courses are relevant, high quality. From a research perspective, this is something that we're still, uh, we're still building at the university, uh, but we want to influence policy. We want to influence policy through the research that we do at, at AIU, specifically on social economic development and innovation. Um, I would like to create an ecosystem for our students to innovate through perhaps an innovation sandbox. Um, in terms of the university as a whole, Growing above and beyond the three faculties that we have, we might introduce another school after five years once the university has stabilized. But as I mentioned just now, the idea of creating schools instead of faculties allow us to introduce interdisciplinary programs. So it gives that flexibility similar to the American system. In terms of our personal goal and target at the university, by any measure of success, we want the YSBC at AIU to be the top in Malaysia and at least the top three in ASEAN. And I had a really interesting conversation with Dr. Soraya after our board meeting two, two weeks ago. It was a Saturday and we were on campus. And Dr. Soraya asked me what success meant. And I said, that's a great question. And, and I would break it down into two measures. Internally, we want to make sure that social business, everybody eats, lives and breathes social business from our staff to the students. That goes without saying. And I would like in five years time, to have at least 10% of our student population with social businesses that have been registered and that can scale impact. So that, that's my personal target. Externally, we want to have an impact on the community, as we mentioned. So we work with uh, communities in Baling and Sikh, which are the poorer parts, poor districts of Kadah. And, and what we spoke about is that we need to first establish the baseline. What is the baseline that we have today? What is the baseline of poverty? Poverty is multidimensional. Once we understand what that baseline is, then we will understand where we want to be. We have to decide 
we want to reduce poverty in Kedah by XX percent by 20 XX. That X we need to decide. And I cannot comment on that today, but it's something that my team and I will work on and we will make it happen. And, and above and beyond that, we also want to empower the entrepreneurs in the rural areas. A lot of them have small businesses. Dr. Suraya and her team of students have gone out to help them with digital marketing, to promote financial literacy, to even promote basic literacy in the schools in rural Qadah. And, and through those, the issue sometimes with these entrepreneurs is that they don't have access to the wider market. They only have access to their neighbors, those with similar purchasing power as them. But if we can bring them onto the digital platform through the skills of our students, they suddenly have access to this, this wider market. So there's a lot that we want to do on the foundation level, my personal, um, my personal goal, because I wear two hats, I also represent the foundation. On the foundation level, I would like to set up a small impact investment fund, maybe to invest in social businesses who are in countries where our students come from, maybe not. These are ideas that are still very high level at this juncture. Um, but really our purpose and our mission is to reduce poverty in Qatar. And together with the team and the university, I'm confident that we can make it happen. Well, 10% is a high goal, but uh, I'm sure you will get it in, in five years' time or maybe even before. Um, Dr. Asuraya, um, Sarifa has told us that uh, you also are worried about the uh, research. Uh, I, I know you play an important role in the Social Business Academy Conference. Uh, how does it encourage you? How, how was your role there? Yeah, yes, uh, thank you, Anna. Uh, we participated in a few social business conferences organized by UNOS uh, Center. I think uh, the one that motivated us is uh, we, we want to learn from each other. That, that's a pure intention. Uh, at, at the beginning, we want, to, we want to learn from each other. As uh, you know, there are about 90, 96, 93 YCBC around the world. So during the conference, it's like our family gathering. And uh, we want to know what is happening uh, around the world and how we cope uh, with the pandemic and so on. So we want to learn from each other. And at the same time, uh, we also would like to, during the conference, we highlight and we showcase some of our program that we had uh, conducted. Uh, and also we share the challenges that we face during the pandemic and how we overcome it. Uh, so that is the motivation uh, why we uh, joined all the social business uh, events uh, by Uno Center. So maybe you can tell us more about your research program, um, and also I, I hope you have a, you have collaborations with other universities. So and I'm the first one I want to collaborate. So <laughs> say, most welcome. We're happy to have you. So uh, and so now uh, uh, with the research grant that Sharifa Sofia just mentioned just now, we collaborated with few uh, universities uh, in Malaysia. Uh, mostly in the research of uh, property elevations uh, in the district of Baling and Sik just now in Kedah. So we collaborate with a uh, few universities in Malaysia. Uh, but we also have our uh, internal grant, which is uh, among the lecturers. Uh, that one we focus also in poverty elevation and also social business, social business uh, research. And this is more to short term, uh, short -term uh, grant or uh, action research. So this is what we are currently doing. So we are doing uh, together. We, we do the community engagement. At the same time, we also conduct research. It's action research. So like Chair Fasoha just mentioned just now, we hope that we can uh, propose whatever finding that we have to the policymakers. Hope uh, some changes can be made from our, from our work, from our approach, from our suggestions. <laughs> That's great. Well, as I, well, as I, as uh, Sinat said before, I am also the president of the Observatory for the Prospect in Spain. Uh, this is a huge network. We are, uh, at the moment, we are 19 regional teams all around Spain, one in each of the um, autonomous communities in Spain. We are like, uh, like 180 researchers. Uh, we are focused on entrepreneurship in general, but uh, among us, there are some, some of us are focused on social entrepreneurship. So from here, I want to offer you our network to work with you. Uh, it's not only Cantabria who has a, a Jurnus Social Business Center, 
the there is another one in Murcia with uh, Alicia uh, Rubio as the leader. There is another new in Baleares with uh, Julio Batle. There is another one in Cadiz, the south of Spain. And there's another one in, 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 in Catalonia. And it's going to be another one in Canary Island. So it's like in Spain, we are beginning to create a small regional network. And because there will be different uh, centers, uh, I'm sure we can do many things with you. Because in all of them, there are people who is focused on this uh, important problem about how to encourage people to have uh, the idea more clear and how to, to improve and how to foster the creation of social businesses. Um, Sarifa, uh, Professor Yunus blames universities for producing job seekers rather than entrepreneurs. So how are you making sure that this is not quite your case? So to answer this question, I just first and foremost want to remind the audience that the scholarship that our students are on, it's not a loan. It's not a loan, it's not a bond, it's a scholarship. And with this scholarship, the understanding between us and the students is that they then one day when they're able to, to make it in life and after graduation, they extend help to somebody else in need, either through employment or through whatever mechanism. So first and foremost, our students know that one, upon graduation, we encourage them to go back to their respective countries with the knowledge that they have gained at our university and become change agents in their respective communities. So to answer your question, I'm gonna break it down into the three faculty three schools that we have, right? So I mentioned first the School of Education. I wanna talk about the School of Education separately because if we, if we talk about being job seekers versus job creators, we recognize and understand that the, there is a shortage of primary school teachers in certain countries. So as a result of that, and if you look at the educational system in many countries, it is broken. And educational reform takes a lot of political will because the gestation period of any educational policy supersedes any politician in power. So as a result of that, the School of Education in terms of jobs, it's a natural transition. Our, the, the students that we train to become primary school teachers, they will get a job um, when they enter the labor market. In fact, many of my teachers are also here in the audience today. But taking a step back, the School of Business and the School of Computing, this is where social business comes into the picture. We want to integrate social business, as Dr. Soraya mentioned just now, into the curriculum, which is already being done. We just need to reinforce that across all schools of the university so that students who go into business, and, and like I mentioned just now, I do not expect our students to be philanthropists. I do not expect all of them to go into social business, but wherever they go, they must understand that social, we coexist with a lot of social issues, rising inequality, poverty, social tensions, climate change, the, the list is endless. And, and we need to give them the tools. And you know, I feel the youth are brave enough to challenge status quo. We inherit a world full of problems and the only solution is if we come up with our own solutions. And, and I really believe that university is a place where students because personally some of the most formative years that I spent were at university, was at university. So if we're able to, to give our students the tools and the exposure at the university, they will be able to rethink um, the way that they do business once they enter the labor market. Yeah, I couldn't be more ready to you, uh, Sarifa, so... And Anna, uh, I think, uh, yeah. social business uh, is really, uh, it's like a tool for the students to explore uh, the potential unemployment for, for, for themselves. For example, if you look at the concept of social business, uh, how are we going to create social business? Uh, first, we have to identify the issues, then we have to find the solutions, and then you have to turn the solution into, into social business model. So imagine uh, for this uh, AIU student, as early as first year, first year student, they, have, they, they, they already think about to come up with their business idea. Uh, so, for example, like uh, Sharifah Sophia mentioned just now, uh, we had a program with the community in rural uh, area, which is Balin, how to uh, educate uh, the digital literacy or the marketing, help them in the digital marketing. 
So the students act like they are business consultants, but different, uh, with different types of, uh, of uh, customers. Their customers now is the bene their bene beneficiaries are poor micro, uh, poor micro entrepreneurs, for example. So they, they now they act like they are, they are as, as their business consultant, helping the micro entrepreneurs in promoting their product through digital, digital platform. So actually they have already created the potential of a job in the, for, for themselves in the future. So this is how the beauty of social business, you know, Professor Mark Yunus is right, you know, social business is a, is a business that can transform uh, the, the community. Yeah, well, I'm afraid we have to finish our conversation, but uh, I could be here for the rest of the day just discussing with you more things, uh, because it's true. So, social business is a is a great tool to do great things for the world. Um, we have a big challenge, uh, Sharifa, Suruya, um, myself, uh, and all the people who is willing to have a better world. So, and a world with a three zeros. So. Uh, so thank you very much for your time, for your for your wonderful experience to share with us. Thank you for Sir Yunus and thank you his team, Sinat, uh, Lamia, for inviting me to be here today to learn a lot about you. And now I think the floor is to Sinat, who has to say goodbye now. <laughs> thank you very much for all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Anna. Thank you, Dr. Soraya. Thank you, Sharifa Sophia. Uh, this has indeed been a great, great conversation. Really wonderful to hear, uh, you, you know, such a simple personal story of how all this came about from. I really liked the point when you said, um, Sophia, that um, the mess, you know, through the scholarship and the students program, the idea is to kind of give it forward. You know, they learn something and then take it and um, maybe the next generation is going to be in a better situation than we are. We are now in a pandemic, this climate change, there are so many poverty, unemployment, so many social problems we're fighting. But maybe our generation, the kids of um, our generation, will be able to learn from our mistakes, mistakes of our ancestors and make that change, make that um, you know, good decision. And that begins at education institution. You know, that begins when you're at school, when you're shaped to think that money making is not the only thing you can do. Um, you can also make money and also look after social issues and social problems. And to ingrain that in the minds of students at universities at a young age is important. So it's really wonderful to know what Al-Bukhari is doing Doing. I congratulate all the academics, all the teachers, the students who have joined us today and um, are part of this initiative. So to all our wise BCs, um, I would request you to look at the Al-Bukhari model, maybe um, such can be replicated. And again, they're also doing the UNOS professional masters, which will be soon coming up. They'll be the second university after the Asian Institute of Technology in Thailand, to, um, starting the UNOS masters. So maybe that's something other students may be interested in taking up. So thank you. Thank you very, very much for sharing your story. Uh, thank you again to our audience for being here and watching our YSBC web lecture series. Uh, these are sessions we will have every month, uh, twice every month unless you know there's some break um, but the next one is coming and we will see a slideshow on our next lectures so thank you very much we end here with a slideshow on our upcoming lectures Sina, I can I say yes one yes, thing sure, sure sure absolutely before we leave um, they have the lemma or the concept inspiring minds in your in their university and I think uh, Sharifa Sophia is she's inspiring a lot to young people if I were, uh, sorry, if, I, if I were your father or your mother, I will be very proud of you because uh, you you could do many things. Uh, you could uh, be um, doing whatever you would like it to do. But uh, I think um, we need more people like you, inspiring young people and uh, for doing good things for the world because uh, we need it. So thank you very much for 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 being like you are and for doing what you are doing. Um, you. Congratulations to your parents. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's all. Thank you.
Yes, exactly. Uh, so it just shows how, how good deeds go a long way. Everyone appreciates good deeds. So I, everyone uh, look at her model and maybe you may be having also other ideas. Go implement them. Lo go look at social businesses, um, how they're working. And of course, this three zero clubs. We have put a link in the chat box. Young people, students, if you want to form a three zero club, make a change, be a change maker. This three zero club is the way. So please look at uh, the three zero club website it's in the chat box and make your three zero club and let us know thank you very much we'll see you again in a few weeks thank you please play this slideshow on the upcoming lectures Cheers. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.